In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the maximum number of electrons given a certain set of quantum numbers. So let's say if n is equal to 7, what is the maximum number of electrons that will have an n value of 7? n is the principal quantum number, by the way. Well, there's a formula that we could use to get the answer. But first, let's understand how to get the answer. When n is 1, there's only one possible orbital that we can have, and it's the 1s orbital. s can hold a maximum of 2 electrons. Now, when n is 2, you could have the 2s orbital. Let me rewrite this here. You could have the 2s orbital, and you could have the 2p orbital. p can hold up to 6 electrons. s can hold up to 2, so you can get a maximum of eight electrons in the second energy level. In the third energy level, there are three sublevels, 3s, 3p, and 3d. d can hold up to 10. So if you add eight plus 10, you get a maximum of 18 electrons in the third energy level. In the fourth energy level, there are four sublevels, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. F can hold up to 14 electrons. So if you add 18 plus 14, that gives you a maximum of 32 electrons in the fourth energy level. Now for n equals 5, you have the 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f. I believe the next one is 5h or something. But whatever it is, it's going to be, if S can hold up to 2, P can hold up to 6, D can hold up to 10, F can hold up to 14. So notice the pattern. This is increasing by 4. 14 plus 4 is 18. So H can hold up to 18. If we add 32 to 18, we get 50. Now, what is the relationship between these numbers and their respective n values? Notice that it's always 2n squared. For instance, when n is 3, if you square it, you get 9. 9 times 2 is 18. When n is 5, 5 squared is 25 times 2, you get 50. So, when n is 7, the maximum number of electrons is going to be 2n squared, or 2 times 7 squared. 7 squared is 49, 49 times 2 is 98. So the maximum number of electrons in the seventh energy level is 98 electrons. Now let's move on to our next example. So let's say that n is 4 and ms, that is the electron spin, is positive 1 half. What is the maximum number of electrons with these two quantum numbers? How many electrons can have those two quantum numbers? Well, we know how to determine the maximum number of electrons in the fourth energy level. The answer is going to be 2n squared. So it's going to be 2 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16 times 2. So there's a maximum of 32 electrons in the fourth energy level. Half of them will have a spin of plus a half. That is, half of them will have an up arrow the other half will have a down arrow. So the answer is going to be half of 32 electrons. It's going to be 16 electrons. Now for those of you who want to see the answer visually, here's what you can do. So the fourth energy level has four sublevels. It has the S sublevel. It has the P sublevel. By the way, the P sublevel has three orbitals. It has the D sublevel, which has five orbitals, and also the F sublevel, which has seven orbitals. Each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So in each orbital, there's going to be an up arrow and a down arrow. So if you were to count all of the arrows in the fourth energy level, you should get a total 
of 32. So you have 2 in the S sublevel, 6 in the P sublevel, 10 in the D, and then if we fill this up, that's going to be 14. 2 plus 6 plus 10, that's 18 plus 14, gives us 32. And remember, half of the arrows will be up, up arrows. So half of 32 is 16. So that's the maximum number of electrons with these two quantum numbers can only be 16. Now let's move on to the next problem. What is the maximum number of electrons that can have the quantum numbers n equals 4 and l equal 2? Now l, the angular momentum quantum number, tells you the shape of the orbital. When l is 0, we're dealing with an s orbital. When L is 1, we're dealing with a p orbital. L is 2, it corresponds to a d orbital. And when L is 3, that corresponds to an f orbital. So here, L is 2. We're dealing with the d um, sublevel. And it's in the fourth energy level. So that's when you combine these two, we are dealing with the 4d sublevel. Now we know that s can hold up to two electrons, as mentioned before. P can hold up a maximum of 6 electrons, D can hold up to 10, F can hold up to 14. So the maximum number of electrons in the 4D sublevel is going to be 10. Keep in mind the D sublevel has 5 orbitals, and each of these orbitals can hold up to 10 electrons. I mean, each orbital holds up to 2 electrons, but 5 orbitals combined can give you a maximum of 10 electrons. So there's only 10 electrons that can have these two quantum numbers. So that's the answer for that problem. Now, what if we have N and ML, the magnetic quantum number? What is the maximum number of electrons that can have those two quantum numbers? In the fourth energy level, we know that there are four sublevels. S, P, D, and F. Now the L value that corresponds to S, we said it's 0. For P, it's 1. For D, it's 2. And for F, L is 3. So that's the angular momentum quantum number. Now let's move on to the magnetic quantum number. ML is between a negative L and L. So when L is 0, ML can only be 0. When L is 1, ML will vary between negative 1 and 1. So it could be three things. When L is 2, ML can vary between negative 2 and 2. And when ML is 3, it can vary between negative 3 and 3. So we want to determine how many electrons can have an N value of 4 and an ML value of 1. So here, the ML value is 1. Now recall that S corresponds to one orbital. P can have three orbitals, or rather it has three orbitals. D has five orbitals. Notice that ML corresponds to the orbitals in each sublevel. And we know that each orbital can hold up to three electrons. So this represents one orbital, which holds up to two electrons. This represents another orbital, which holds two electrons. And this represents one orbital in the F sublevel, which holds two electrons. So because we have three orbitals circled, that corresponds to a total of six electrons. So that's the answer for this problem. That is the maximum number of electrons that can have these two quantum numbers. So far, we've considered examples where we had two quantum numbers. But what if we have three quantum numbers? Let's say n is 4, l is 3, and ml, the magnetic quantum number, let's say that's a negative 1. What is the maximum number of electrons with these three quantum numbers? Well, we know that when L is 3, it corresponds to the F sublevel. So the fact that N is 4 and L is 3, we're dealing with 
the 4F sublevel. F has seven orbitals. And we know that when L is three, ML will vary between negative three and three. So each orbital has a specific magnetic quantum number. It has a specific ML value. Now, ML is negative one, so we're focused on this particular orbital. And that orbital can hold up of, it can hold a maximum of two electrons. So therefore, there are only two electrons that can have these three quantum numbers. So that's the maximum number of electrons that can have those quantum numbers. It's two electrons. So that's it for that problem. Now, how many electrons can have these four quantum numbers? The answer is one. It's always going to be one. A set of four quantum numbers can only specify one electron. Each electron has, they all have their unique set of four quantum numbers. So anytime you're given four quantum numbers, if those quantum numbers are allowed, it can only represent one electron. So let's go back to three quantum numbers. Let's say if n is three, l is one, and the electron spin is plus a half. How many electrons can have these three quantum numbers? When n is three and l is one, what type of sublevel do we have? When L is one, it's the P sublevel. So we're dealing with the three P sublevel and P has three orbitals. So there's six electrons at most in the three P sublevel. Now, how many of them have a spin of positive one half? Well, these are only the up arrows. So there's only three electrons that contain these three quantum numbers. Now let's work on one more example. Let's say that N is four, ML is one, and the electron spin is negative a half. What is the maximum number of electrons that have these three quantum numbers? Well, we know that when N is four, there's gonna be four sublevels, 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. And then we know that L is always zero for S. It's one for P, two for D, three for F. Now let's focus on the ML values. S has only one orbital. P has three orbitals. D has five orbitals. And F, F has seven orbitals. Now, when L is zero, ML is going to be zero. When L is one, ML will vary between negative one and one. When L is two, ML will vary between negative two and two. And you get the picture. So let's just put these numbers in. And now we're focused on the orbitals with an ML value of one. So let's draw a box around each of those. Each of these three orbitals can hold two electrons. So this tells us that there are six electrons with those two quantum numbers. Now the spin is negative a half, so we can only highlight the arrows that are going down. So thus there's a total of three electrons with those three quantum numbers. So now you know how to determine the maximum number of electrons given a certain set of quantum numbers. Thanks for watching.